In this video, we're going to continue with section 2.1. We're going to start with example 7. Example 7 shows a graph that shows the average number of T cells, f of x, as a function of time after HIV infection, x. So on the x-axis, we have time after infection in years. On the y-axis, we have average T cell count. So our questions are to use the graph to find and interpret f of 8 for question b. Now, f of 8 means that we want to find the y value because we want to find the function value when the x value is equal to 8. So looking at my graph, x equals 8 is right here. The y value there is looks like it's right on this grid line, which is 200. So f of 8 is equal to 200. In terms of the interpretation, this means that after 8 years, The average T cell count is 200. Question C says for what value of x is f of x equal to 350? So this is asking me what is the x value when y is 350. So generally speaking, when we have function notation, we have x, and then the f of x is the y when we graph. So 350, what I'm going to do is go back to my graph. 350 is going to be about right here on the y-axis, so I go across until I meet my graph and it looks like it meets right about here, which is when x equals 6. So f of x equals 350 when x equals 6. Or in other words, after 6 years, the average T cell count is 350. So next you should do checkpoint Problem number seven, parts A and B. This is using the same graph as example seven, the graph above. Do this in your notes, check your answer, and then move on with the video. Next, we're gonna talk about domain and range when we have a graph. If we're looking at a graph, the domain is all possible values for the input. So we look for that along the x-axis, or we look from left to right all possible values of the graph. For the range, that's all possible y values, so we look along the y-axis or think bottom to top. Now notice with the range, we have um, the endpoint here is lower than the highest possible value. The graph goes up to a maximum point and then comes back down a little bit. So the range is all possible y values, so it goes all the way up to this uppermost point. Now, when we're writing domain and range in the homework, we're going to put them into interval notation. Interval notation uses square brackets to indicate endpoints that are included. Square brackets look like this. You can find them on your keyboard. Parentheses are used to indicate that the endpoints are not included. Parentheses look like that. And we always use parentheses if we have infinity or negative infinity. So if you're using infinity or negative infinity, you would never have a square bracket right next to it. You would always have a parentheses. And you can see more detail on interval notation in the textbook. The other thing about interval notation is that we always write the smaller number first. So we write the smaller number, comma, the larger number, we separate them with a comma, and then put either square brackets or parentheses around them. But the smaller number always comes first. And this tells us that this is the range of values that either the domain or the range can take on. 
So we have this example from the book. This is a half circle. So looking at this graph, the domain, we look at the x-axis and we see that the graph goes from negative 4 up to 2. The smallest value is negative 4, the largest value is 2. And both endpoints are included because the graph has these solid circles. That means that that point is included. So square bracket, negative 4, comma 2, and a square bracket around the 2. Now looking at the range, the y coordinates range from 1 up to 4. And we can assume here um, that the circle, it looks like kind of the circle part is hitting 4. We can assume that it actually does. So 4 is included in the range, as well as 1 because these are, again, solid circles. So my range is square bracket, 1, comma, 4, and then square bracket around the 4. So next we're going to look at example 8. It says to use the graph of each function to identify its domain and range. So starting with A, domain, if we look at this, the x-coordinates go from negative 2 up to 1. And both are included because this is a solid circle and this is a solid circle up here. So that means both endpoints are included in the graph. So we use a square bracket around negative 2. Negative 2 is the smaller value. And then 1 is the larger value and a square bracket around that. Now for the range, we're looking at the y-coordinates. Now the smallest y-coordinate here is 0. The graph goes from 0 up to 3. Again, both points endpoints are included because we have the solid circles. So my range would be square bracket, 0, comma, 3, square bracket. Now for part B, when I look at my domain, this one's a little bit different because I have an open circle here. Um, on the lower end. And that open circle means that the point is not actually included in the graph. And so that means negative 3 is going to have a parenthesis around it, not a square bracket, because negative 3 is not actually included. Everything up to negative 3 um, is included, but negative 3 itself is not. So we have parentheses around negative 3, that's my smallest value for x. My largest value for x is 2, and that value is included because on that end we do have the solid circle. So it's parentheses, negative 3, comma 2 with a square bracket. So you could have a mix of one parentheses and one square bracket. It just depends on what the graph looks like. For the range, my smallest y value is 1, but again I have that open circle, so I'm going to use a parenthesis around the 1. My largest y value is 2, so the graph goes from 1 to 2, and 2 is included because I have the solid circle there, so I use the square bracket around the 2. For C, For the domain, we go from negative 2 to positive 1. Negative 2 is included because it's a solid circle. 1 is not included because it's an open circle. So square bracket, negative 2, comma 1, parenthesis. And for my range, now my smallest value here is 1. That's the lowest point on the graph, even though it's not the end point. My largest value is 5. Both of those are included, so they both get square brackets. And lastly, for part D, this one's a little bit different because instead of having um, end points, I have an arrow on this end. So that means that the graph keeps on going um, forever. So my smallest possible value here, well, there isn't a smallest possible value because it's going to keep on going in the negative direction. So this is where I use negative infinity. So negative infinity means we always use a parenthesis. And negative infinity is the smallest value. 
If we're using negative infinity, it always comes first. If we're using positive infinity, it would always come second. Remember, smallest number is always first. So my domain is from negative infinity up to my largest x value, which is 4. And since it's a solid circle there, it is included. So I use a square bracket around it. Now, for my range, my smallest y value is 0. There are no y values in the negatives on this graph. My smallest y value is 0, and since it's a solid circle, it is included. For my largest value, well, again, there isn't going to be one because this arrow means that the graph is going to keep on going. Now, it's going to go more um, to the left than it is up or down, but it's still, there's no upper limit on how big the y values can get. If I keep on going here, the graph is just going to continue. So, my upper value for the range is infinity. Now, since it's infinity, we always use parentheses around infinity. So next you should do the checkpoint 8 problems and then check your answers in the notes.